This is not a courtesy visit by President Muhammadu Buhari. He's here in Jos, the Plateau State Capital, to console the people over the attack which reportedly killed 86 people in the most gruesome manner. <laughs> He's straight to the government house for a meeting with interest groups, religious and community leaders, who each have high stakes in the goings-on in Plateau State. President Buhari's words are direct. The leaders of constituencies should apply themselves more to prevent such needless violence. What happened here is very bad. And the costume of leadership from your household to wherever you are is justice. The bottom line is justice. This is why when I go, Normally, after terrible incidents, I get the leadership of the communities, the law enforcement agents, and tell them to please continue to have control over their consequences. Describing the act as what it is, the governor of Plato State urges the president to ensure justice is served and also wants a mop-up of all weapons in the state. This current attack, Your Excellency, Mr. President, is very disturbing and alarming. We are concerned as a state that sophisticated weapons used in this attack from the evidences of ground and the narration of victims are not those conventional to our environment for self-defense or reflective of a terrorist invasion. I feel obliged to request that you direct security agents to immediately commence arms pop up in these areas of conflict. We subscribe to a house to house and community to community search for illegal weapons that have been stockpiled in the state. This is the second time the president will be visiting Plato this year with the same words for the people of the state. Live peacefully to ensure the violence does not rear its head again. I refuse to be an accomplice to what's going on in this society now. In this match, I went as far as the, I could be allowed to the villa to say to the president, stop the killings. Stop the killings. The, Nigeria cannot be a vast canvas for killings of citizens. Stop the blood flow, especially of innocent children. If the president continues to show his loyalty to an incompetent security infrastructure that is there and permitting the deaths of our citizens, if he prefers his loyalty to them because of their loyalty to him as a person, in utter disregard of their loyalty to the Nigerian people, I need the president who takes pride in talking about his personal integrity to know that such action is abuse of power. Welcome back. Well, keeping our tabs and following up on what's uh, the latest developments, let's go over to uh, Yakubu Dati, who is the Commissioner for Information in Plateau State. Good morning and thank you for joining us today. Well, we've seen the uh, Vice President, the President, uh, Security Chiefs visiting Plateau State. But uh, what can you tell us that is happening now in terms of ensuring that those killings don't happen again after all of these visits? Mr. Dati, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you now. All right, so could you, could you tell us, after all these visits, what exactly has been done or measures put in place at the moment to ensure that these killings don't happen again? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, first and foremost, when this uh, calamity, we call it calamity, attack broke out, uh, Governor Simon uh, Lalong immediately uh, stopped uh, his official function in Abuja, headed back to Jos, 
and also imposed a dog to dawn coffee in the three local governments uh, of Riom, Barikiladi, and Josau. I also personally supervised the clearing of road and inspected some of the areas affected, especially areas like Forest, uh, Mararaba Jama, uh, Bukuru, all the places where there were roadblocks and uh, passengers or passers where we were affected, he rushed. And uh, he also made a state broadcast. And as I speak with you, uh, President Buhari just left just last night, where, where he came to condone with the people of Plateau State. And uh, shortly before the day before that, Vice President Yemi Osimba Joe was also in just where he held meetings with uh, a cross session of uh, stakeholders, including traditional rulers, religious leaders, where there was open discussion for almost seven hours. And uh, several decisions were taken, which include mobilization of security uh, and the DIG operations is already on ground. The AIG was also here yesterday. And uh, there was also a call for NEMA to mobilize relief materials uh, to be able to reach out to those in distress. Uh, furthermore, there is also a decision taken that uh, in that area, where the, within the back of the axis, there will be a police mobile barrack to be established there because it's uh, becoming a recurrent flashpoint. And also, the federal government agreed that the 10 billion naira set aside for rehabilitation of crisis area uh, will also cover Plateau State so that there will be immediate relief uh, right now. And as I speak with you, we have uh, aerial patrol by helicopters and JAWS. We have um, more security outfit, a combination of uh, the, the, the police, the military, civil defense, and uh, other security agencies. And as I said, we have also, we already launched the early system signals where people can launch on the platform and report such that there will be quick response from the uh, security community. Well, Mr. Dati, uh, some of the reports we saw, uh, not just that of yesterday, because even as that uh, the 14th of October 2017, when the similar killing occurred, we, there were reports that despite the curfew, that the killings were still going on. How effective are these curfews usually when they are imposed? Well, that is why the, the strategy the state government has adopted, which has worked for the past three years, is that of uh, encouraging community dialogue, where leaders of the affected community will drive the process of uh, peace building and sustenance of peace. Uh, because the truth is, after the restoration of peace, the security personnel will be withdrawn eventually, and uh, the communities will be left to face themselves. And that is why we are doing that. Uh, we recall that immediately happened, the governor set up a committee made up of the Birom and the Fulani, where they came together, they even brought uh, a submission which was adopted by the Plateau State that I mean the governor called an emergency council meeting just two weeks ago where the decisions taken were rectified and uh, the, so it was just awaiting implementation. So our strategy is to uh, operate especially with the establishment of the Plateau State uh, Peace Building Agency is to evolve measures where communities will be able to dialogue and, and uh, champion the process of peace, and in such manner, it will now be guaranteed that the peace will be sustainable because it will now be the responsibilities of members of those communities to sustain those peace, having found the need for it. All of this that you've talked about and the strategies that have been launched, part of what we glean usually is that these areas are remote areas, they're very prone to attacks. Number one, are these measures, um, are you optimistic that? they will indeed put an end to these killings and are they going to be on a permanent basis and not just because of these killings which happen on a large scale so will the helicopters be what's the frequency yes because we believe that that will restore peace because what we are doing is a double prone approach first we are sustained ensuring the return of peace through the support of the security agencies but also ensuring that the peace process is driven by the people themselves.